Welcome to the Good Day Podcast, <laughs> where high quality um, sound and chairs are made. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I broke my chair and my mic sounds weird. So whatever, we're going to go with this. What the podcast is. Let's roll with it. Hey, uh, yeah. before we get started, I uh, just want to shout out um, a Narrative Coffee. Thank you for sponsoring. There's some great coffee. We got the uh, Rwandan here, um, freshly brewed. Um, it's great. Great coffee. Shout out to Caleb for um, sponsoring the podcast, being a part of what we're doing again. Um, wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for you. Go check them out, Narrative Coffee Roasters. Um, they're awesome. They're pretty good. I love them. Um, Caleb has dreads. I always like to say that when I shout him out that he has dreads because he's he's white and he has dreads. So whenever he's listening to this, he just hears that. <laughs> um, so ch- check out their coffee. They're going to do some big things coming up soon here. Um, so you want to find out now before it's too cool. And when it's cool, then, you know, you're, you're late. So get with them now. Um, also want to uh, shout out a new sponsor we have, Wicked Dolphin. Yeah. They have, we have our, their, uh, their crystal um, uh, rum here, and then we have their coconut rum. We're kind of, me and Jason are drinking on that. You can't drink because you got a, you got a breastfeed yeah. and all that yeah. good neither, stuff. Neither can you, Mark. No. <laughs> you can't have any. You got the coffee. It's, it's narrative coffee. And um, so shouts out to Wicked Dolphin there. They were, last year they were uh, voted best distillery in the U.S. Wow. Pretty freaking wild. Nice. Pretty crazy. Um I think there's like five distilleries in LA. <laughs> no, there's multiple distilleries, and they they did a they do a really good job. Um, if you haven't been there, there's a there's a distillery. Hey, it's one of our guests right now. She's getting hype right now. Um, she's hype right now. She's lit. <laughs> that coffee. Yeah, that coffee. Um, um, so yeah, shout out to our sponsors. Thank you. No, you're good. You're going nowhere. Um, so we're here. If you're wondering what what that baby is, um, I have a newborn child. <laughs> His interviews. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have now. a newborn. She keeps it up. <laughs> oh my god! I I have a newborn child here, and um, you know, I'm fixing this up here. And uh, if you didn't know, I just had a baby. No, I'm playing. Um, we have uh, two people here who I've just actually met this year. Um, they're, they're new friends of mine, people that already I, I look up to that inspire me, that, um, you know, that are passionate about what they do, that have some cool niche things that they're doing that I really wanted to, to share with the world and have them tell their story and talk to them, ask them good questions. And I feel like it's going to be a good conversation. So without further ado, I want to I want to introduce um, Corinne. Corinne. Yeah, you nailed it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Come on, bro. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Jason. Jason. Yes. Jason. And then and then who's this this uh this star Mara. we have? Mara. Mara. Yeah. She has the awesome, if you're listening on audio, she has this dope like onesie thing going right. on. She's it's rocking. like tie-dye, but like it's just fresh. It's it's in hey, the brown bow tie, the hey. neutral tones, nothing too crazy. You're know, like you have a good sense of style. Yeah, going, we try like, to say some gender. Yeah. You know. You know? I say neutral. Give her options. You know, let her be who she wants to be. So, I, one of the feedback, some of the feedback I've got is like, Galik, you don't introduce the guests. Like, you don't tell them what they do. So, before we go on, what, I, I feel like it's hard to pinpoint, like, what you guys do because you guys have some, like, bigger picture things going we on. Got but, dreams. Yeah, we got yeah. dreams. Yeah. So, in <laughs> essence, car- like, career-wise, whatever, what do you guys do? What, do you, what what's What's going on? Mm-hmm. So um, I started Jet Set Wed, a destination wedding planning company, and we're pretty international. Um, I do weddings all over the world, um, and we started out small like everyone does, and it's been about eight years, and now we're doing luxury weddings, which is, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. I say we because I've been trained to say we, but it's me, it's me <laughs> and my husband, um, but you know, we makes you feel big, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I stick with we because it will be a we. Well, just to give people uh, a, a little bit of context of who you are, and I'm going to brag on you, I've been doing weddings for like eight years, like halfway, like part-time on the weekend, but like since I've started, you're like... Jet Set Wed has been the premier, like, oh, wedding planning, like, this, like, you're like a mythological creature to me, so, <laughs> <laughs> so when I met you, like, I was like, you know, I was actually very nervous, I was like, oh my god, I gotta 
<laughs> I'm meeting like the like the best wedding planner. That, you know, I tell people like, oh, I'm meeting with this girl. They're like, you're meeting. Oh my god, don't screw it up. You know? <laughs> so um, right. just to let you guys know, she's kind of like a big deal. She's not oh. not gonna say it, but you're you're well respected in the wedding industry in general. So thank um, you. And you and you do like how many weddings you would say a year? Um, I I only do twelve a year. Um, because they're kind of big now. Yeah, yeah. Um, it used to be quantity, and now it's more quality. Now we're really, um, really specific on who we take on. Yeah. Because now I have the luxury of kind of pinpointing who my ideal client is and being able to really cater to that specific that's person. the fact that's also one of the things I heard is like she only does like 10 weddings a year <laughs> and for five me weddings. I, I three yeah, weddings. she does <laughs> one big one <laughs> <laughs> she did Kanye <laughs> West's <laughs> wedding and that was it <laughs> <laughs> which that's funny that you picked him <laughs> Jason has a love affair and I have me too yeah. oh my god yeah. we're gonna talk about Kanye we're gonna talk about Kanye <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna save that for later because we definitely gotta talk about some Kanye but um, yeah because for me I mean I do like quadruple amount you know I do a lot of weddings a year but that's how you know, that's how did. we start off yeah. yeah and that's how so again like I said inspiring me in many different ways whether it's in the wedding industry or kind of some other stuff we're gonna talk about and so um, let's go to you man what, what, what do you do who yeah. are you? Uh, so, uh, Jason Peters from uh, the great state of Indiana. Hey. hey! What's Indiana known for? What's in Indiana? Corn. <laughs> Cornfields. Corn. Like the band. Oh, the band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a K. Yeah, with a K. Uh, no, um, I've been for the last, I would say for the last 12 to 15 years, yeah. been working in the education industry. Wow. Uh, mostly around uh, designing education and training programs for um, companies, businesses, and institutions. Sure. And the biggest thing for me was sort of to create efficiency. And wow. that was something that was very challenging for a lot of a lot of the people I was working with. And so I started going on that journey myself. And so over the last three or four years, um, Corinne and I, um, more me than Corinne, sort of went on that journey. And then from that, I started my uh, own company just about, now what? Three months ago, four months ago, yeah. Jet Set State. Jet Set State. Yeah. What is that? Lifestyle design. So the idea is to help uh, help people sort of catch up and keep up mm. with today's society and sort of focus on what's important in bringing freedom and happiness into their life. Wow. Because that's one of the things when I first met you, you were telling me about your husband and um, you were telling me kind of like he's like a life coach. And, and then what I've heard from other people about you guys, you guys are like, uh, this word that a lot of people don't really know, like minimalist, yeah. in the sense that you guys, um, what do you, what would you say you live off of a year? Like what what like you guys keep you guys cut it down, correct? Yeah. Uh, I would say in a year, like straight expenses, we're at twelve thousand. Twelve thousand a year, and I know damn right you make way <laughs> more than that. <laughs> so you've like simplified life, and what you do is you help other people do that same thing yeah. in whatever context they're in. Yeah. It's about uh, creating freedom. Yeah. Really. Within your life. Because you guys travel a lot. Yeah. Really. I mean, I, I followed you. I follow, I've only been following you guys on social media for like two, three months. And I'm like, you guys, <laughs> where are you going? Where, <laughs> this is awesome. Like, yeah. so it's about that freedom you said. That's what yeah. feeds our soul really is experience and, and being around new cultures. So that's, what's important for us. So, in order to do that, you have to kind of start from the ground and right. build a life yeah. that allows yeah. that. So that's kind of why we, we go the minimalist route. And, and I, I yeah. Think, yeah, and I was going to say, I think it's important that we're not the, like live out of a suitcase no. and eat ramen noodles. Like, we're still trying to still, live it. Still yeah. live, you know. Yeah, we're still living it. I like nice things. We have, yeah. you know, nice place. We like right. to entertain. And but you focus on what's important. Yeah. And for us, traveling and culture is important, so it's easier to make decisions about what we're doing on the day-to-day when we know that our, our ultimate focus is this sort of freedom. Sure. That, that's what, so, like, did you come from a place of clutter and chaos that made you, like, figure out, how did you end up going, I want to so, simplify? Separate stories. <laughs> separate stories. All right. Separate so, separate ladies story. first. Ladies first. So, um, I, my father is Egyptian, Hi. and so, like, I think he was just kind of raised to, if you don't have the money for it, then you can't afford it. So we never had 
loans. He bought everything cash. So that's kind of where I came from. Mm-hmm. So I started, you know, school. I paid for my education cash, credit by credit. And I've never really taken a loan out. All the cars I have are cash. Our house is cash. cash. I mean, yeah. we just kind yeah. of started there. And then um, when we got together, I was traveling a ton. And, and Jason was kind of like, well, I only have the two weeks. And I said, well, you're going to have to change that because we are going to be traveling a ton. Right. Um, so he ended up just like quitting his job. And then it he had to go from, you know, the... I guess the normal way of living, sure. you know, with loans and stuff, and kind of figure out how to adjust to our way so that he could have that freedom. So since he had to do it, he's easily can teach other people how to do it. Right. So you kind of like so. discipled him, yeah, in a sense, <laughs> in his minimalistic, simplified way, um, in a sense. So like, what's your story? How did how did that? So I think I come. Come you. I came from the. Just the typical culture, right? Fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. Consume, 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 right? So people think you're keeping up with the Joneses. Mm-hmm. Hopefully one day you will. And, uh, you know, it just can't. It just got to a point, man, where it's like I wasn't happy. Right. right? It's just like you can't figure it out. You feel overwhelmed. You feel stressed. It's like. Was that around the time you were doing the? Because I don't know if people know, but you started the Reserve Bar. Yeah, a partner and I uh, opened up the Reserve on 41, and that was... I think that was the glimpse of what was possible, okay. right? Because I had a safe job as a teacher. I left that. Right. I got into the entrepreneurship for the first time, and that was challenging, right? right? It's not glamorous as you see on Instagram. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was like, I was in high school. I was in college when the reserve was going, and it's pretty lit. It's pretty lit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so so uh, that, that inspired me to get back into education and sort of learn more. Learn more mm-hmm. about myself, what I want. Um, but of course, you know, like we've talked about this, over time you start collecting your stuff. You just start, and yeah. and you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul, living mm-hmm. check to check, still trying to keep up with everybody. And uh, Corinne wanted to go to Thailand. I don't want this. I'm quitting my job. Just got my master's. So I was I was running that rat race of like everything on paper is what you need to be successful. I got my master's. I got a good job. Like I'm moving up the corporate ladder of getting these better positions but it still wasn't it wasn't enjoyable right and then what do i do this for the next 40 50 years of will life. you keep doing this yeah yeah so uh one of those things i just quit my job we backpacked through thailand what? how was that sick <laughs> sick it was my first time like legit out of the country wait where so where are all the places you've traveled to tonight mm-hmm. You guys, I mean, uh, was it a lot? Is it like a that many? Oh, that we have? Yeah, that you guys are both traveling, or you separately, right? I think if you, well, I've been traveling since I was little. We have, my family is from all, you know, all over the globe. So we've been to a lot of places. Really? Yeah. Um, but since we've been together, um, Thailand, Thailand, Alaska, Beijing, Beijing, Spain, mm-hmm. uh-huh. what is it about traveling that you guys love so much? Just experience and culture and really just that education and, and just learning other ways to do things. Do you feel like um, you're learning you're learning as you're as you're traveling, as you're Absolutely like from people and opportunities and just I mean it's really hard to have um, a different perspective when you're surrounded by the same, same. The affinity of people is the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Right? I mean in all of the US it's pretty similar in how things are done. So we travel and we learn a new way and we bring it back and people are like, what? That's crazy. Yeah. I can't believe you're doing that. And it's like, well, a whole country does this. It's not right. that crazy. It's not that crazy. Um, so uh, we like to do a lot of that. Um, what country or place that you've been, you that you had the most culture shock? Like it just was so culture forward. Culture shock would be Thailand, Thailand? or Morocco. Uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> He's like, look. Thailand. Why, why, why do you say that? Why do you say that? Like, what about it? I, I think for me, it was just the fact that, you know, you sort of, you sort of believe that having less is just like, I couldn't do that and be happy. Then you go to Thailand and everybody is just so happy. And I'm talking about bathrooms are holes in the ground. Like your buckets. <laughs> yeah. To, like, to flush it down. Or like, flush, it, yeah. like, if you use it until you get and so you're like, there's no way I could do this. And then you get there for like, you know, the first five days 
it was like culture shock from that. that. Here's us backpacking through Thailand, jumping on trains, getting mm-hmm. tuk tuks, so speaking we all the just, culture. Yeah, we had a backpack each, and we came back using like half of it. You know, yeah. so it just really helps a perspective. Yeah, and then you know, every time we travel, I always joke. Every time we travel, we come home and never drying things in our dryer again, and we start hanging our clothes <laughs> out. You know, on really? the patio. It lasts for maybe like. <laughs> but still, I want instant coffee. I don't need all this. I don't need. Yeah, we, we're doing drip coffee. Yeah, that's awesome. But then we end up getting the machine again. Um, that's crazy. So you guys have talked a lot about the free, and it feels like me. I just, feel, I think even since I met you guys, I feel your own sense of personal freedom. What, what is, what? How do you define freedom? People are listening. They're like, oh, I kind of like that. Like what that idea, or maybe be confused about what you're talking about freedom. Because we live in America, we're all free, right? Yeah. But what? But to you personally, what is what is that what does that freedom mean? Well, to me, it's it's really financial freedom is what I think really makes somebody free is when you don't have, you know, um, obligations and, you know, bills. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what's freedom and and just being able to take opportunities as they come. I mean, that's huge. Um, we, you know, we decide we want we have a daughter. We you know. And, and we want her to be bilingual. So what's the best way to do that? Oh, you know, we could just buy a place in Spain. So let's think about that. Let's talk about that. And we have, have the freedom to do that. Have you guys bought a place in Spain? That's our, that's our next <laughs> that's goal. Our, yeah, our next goal. that's the next thing. It's a buy a But when you think, spot. you know, but those are, not to get off topic, but those are things that, you know, if you're looking to buy an 80,000 house here, right, mm-hmm. you could find one in Spain just, just as well. Yeah. Beautiful for 80,000, 70. It was just that we don't think about it from that aspect. Right. That's cr- that's crazy. Because like, I think everybody has their own, like, personal de- definition of what freedom is, you know. And uh, it's interesting because that, that, whatever that, whatever that thing is, it's somehow connected to money. Like, you know? Yeah, it definitely is. It, it's like money isn't freedom, but. What 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 do you what part do you feel like money plays into freedom? It just, I mean, me personally, I think, I think money is the reward for creating value in the world. And so, if you're trying to chase money, then you need to start chasing value. Like, what am I giving to the world? Make somebody wants to come, dig in their pocket and pay you for this. And if you can't have a reason for people to do that. Wow. Right, you're gonna you're gonna get money, but it's not gonna it's not gonna satisfy you it's not internally. Fill you. Yeah. Right, it's like these people that have a hundred thousand a year, these guys right. on Wall Street, million dollars, and they're still frustrated. And everybody's like, "Well, if I had a million dollars, I'd be so happy." You know, the, the truth and then they is, get a million dollars, and they get a million dollars, and they're still not, not happy. happy. Right, and so I think it's that internal journey to figure out how you can bring value to the world, and that to me, that's freedom. Right, I can't tell you how to spend your money or how to live. Life, but if I could give you the tools to be able to live it however you want, sure, and make the decisions that you want, you know, I think Diane on your last episode talked about traveling to Egypt and she had this opportunity, and she passed it up, right? And it's like, how many of us pass up this chance to go to a concert that we love or spark some interest in something that we care about because we feel like we're trapped? Because we feel yeah. like we're trapped, yeah. We don't have that. But if I have this yeah. money, then all this stuff will change. And, Nine times out of ten, it's, it's not. So uh, you got to change first before you start chasing that money. That's crazy. That's that's a really good point because um, I feel like that value is because a lot of people work nine to fives. So a lot of people who are who are listening to this are like work right now who are probably on their way to work or whatever. Like yeah. they're they're listening to this. Like man, that sound. Is, are you guys hearing? Like, I heard that. God, yeah. what is that? <laughs> Man, I need a sound engineer because I'm like doing sound as I'm doing this, and it's this is not cool. You're killing it. I'm killing it. Killing it. Please. Does that sound better? That sounds better. Yeah. yeah. That sounds better. Um, I feel like a lot of people who are listening and work a nine to five, and they're, you know, the people who want to create that value. They're, you know, their their hour is worth thirteen dollars, and they're trying to figure out. I know a lot of people who are trying to figure out a way to make that hour worth more, you know, because, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, in the wedding industry, doing a wedding is like, you know, 
four hours is worth someone's month. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think people like see that and they're like, they're like, how, how can you do that? Like, how is that even, how is that even possible to do? And I think like you said creating that value is something that we all want to do. Like self-employment has been the most empowering feeling for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm able to have five days a week to do this. Yeah. Right? Like this is a passion project. Yeah. I'm putting money into this for the most part. You know, I bought these mics and you know, this is time that I'm not necessarily getting paid for, but I'm getting paid for it in like Your passion. Soul. Yeah. Your soul, right? Yeah. So what makes you guys, what's that passion for you guys? What's the, what's your the uh, thing that makes me, you tick? I, wedding days are so fulfilling, so fulfilling to bring that love and that enjoyment and kind of really refocusing on what's important, letting the couple refocus on what's important so that, you know, and, and creating memories that right. are, you know, beautiful and positive, and I mean, that's, I love that. That means everything to me. Um, right. And then, you know, we, uh, another company that we're starting just having her, and that's something I want to mention too. I mean, it's yeah, really. Yeah, talk, talk about, you guys are doing something with, like, yeah. parenthood, right? So for me, it's always been really important to just do what I want to do, and then figure out how to get paid for it. Yeah. So, um, what are we going to be doing once we have her? We're going to be spending a lot of time with her. What are we doing that's different that we could add to hey. other people's lives? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, is there something we could teach or we could educate people on? And, and I think a lot of, a lot of our friends, you know, have, um, interest in how we live our life and, and how we, um, want to raise her, you know? And, and so I thought we would start a blog. So we're starting a blog, Jet Set Mom. Um, hmm just to kind of talk about how we're going to raise her because it's also, it's a minimalist. So it started with, you know, our, um, travel. Yeah. Our travel packing, and, uh, the going places, purchasing stuff for her. I mean, she has nothing. <laughs> this poor baby. <laughs> um, but she has no walker has or swing no. or bouncer or, I mean, because we're not going to have that when we travel with her. So how do you, cause it kind of seemed like, not that you feel guilty, but, do you ever feel that guilt of, you know, you see your friends and they have like playground and blah, no. blah, 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 blah. I don't at all no. because How? she's happy. She's a happy, happy baby. Everybody's like, why is she so happy? Why is she? And she always, they always want her around. Well, and what's, what's your definition of happy? Like when you say she's happy, what does that mean? She's content. She's not, she doesn't cry all the time. I mean, she's always with us. And so she's happy being with us. So because we don't have all that stuff. We can bring her with us and she's content and happy. She's not missing her bouncer, missing her walker, missing the swing. Um, she's content with just us. And really that's yeah. all babies Ooh. need anyway is, you know, their yeah. parents. And I think, I think, uh, you know, Hey, we're just starting out as parents. Yeah. So we can fail. We can fail. We're cool with that. We're cool with failing. But I think, you know, one of the cool things when I think about our, my childhood is that the idea of being there, right? right? As a, as a man, or as a woman, like you had these rare moments with your child at the beginning mm -hmm. and I'm trying to prepare, we're trying to prepare her for the future. And so that means that I want to be the person who's talking to her about what that brick is and what this floor is and loving her and showing her these right. things right. more than I'm caring about like let me get five minutes to myself and let me put you over here exactly and not yeah, saying exactly. that parents do that but it's this idea that if everything's encompassing like we're, we know that we're doing this all together yeah. it's a journey together there's going to be ups and downs but as, as a team you know as you're simplifying couple, for what matters yeah you don't want to get bogged down in things that don't matter right, right. you're doing and, that, and that's Man, <laughs> I heard a quote that says, keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. You know? And, do and that's really hard to do really sometimes, hard. Um, especially yeah. when you're, you know, in a society where there's so many other ways of doing things and so many methods and so many toys and products and, you know, really just saying no to all of that and just getting back to basics. Yeah. I well, mean, our trip to Alaska is really what helped us in raising her kind of gave us a, an approach for raising her because they all homeschool and mm -hmm. they all just live off the land and nature and that's their toys, you know? So wow. we wanted to do that for her. And I think, 
you know, there's a there's a quote that says you can't chase two rabbits. Uh, no. Right. What and does that mean? What does that mean to you? So you think about it in our life, we we have all these ultimate choices, right? I could I could start this podcast, I could start this blog, I could start this business, I can do this, I can do so that. So many good things to do. Right, and they're all available, and so we don't we don't actually commit to anything, right? We just sort of like I'll dabble here, I'll dabble there. Like, why is it not working? When you think of successful people, they are hyper focused, right? On laser. Yeah, on accomplishing this thing. Like, I'm going to be good at this. Uh, in the midst of that focus, people are like, I want to pay you for that, right? Because mm-hmm. you can find all the people that are just as successful to do the other stuff. That's hard. That's hard. For someone like me who's so, I'm an idea person. I live in, I live in the clouds of ideas <laughs> and there's so many things I want to do. Like even what like Diane's doing, like yeah. I would love to, you know, go to school and do that. And that, I'm something that I'm considering. It's just hard to. It's hard to it's hard, hard to figure out. This is a book called Good to Great by Phil Collins, yeah. and he talks about there's so many good things you can do, mm-hmm. and there's so many good good opportunities. But great, what's great? How do you find the great? And look, I love this baby right now. This baby doesn't she care. Is just... <laughs> but um, no, like there's so many good things that you can do as a person, right? There's so right. many great opportunities that you can go after, but. How do you tap into that greatness of who you are, what you're doing? So even with Carrie, it's like, all right, what am I really good at? And how do I find people who can fill in for my weaknesses? But it's like, I have my DJ business and I have to make sure that goes well. Yeah. And I love doing that. And I have Curate. And then I have all these other ideas, but I'm like, mm. yeah, it's really hard. I'm, I'm always approaching Jason with a new idea. He shuts me down all the time. And he's like, focus. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, and it's true. It's true. You gotta really well, stay focused. Yeah, Sorry. you gotta you gotta sort of figure out what, what's that end goal. Like, what's that? Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the at the end of the rainbow. And for a lot of us, we're just we're adding without thinking. Yeah. You know, like I consider, what's your hundred year plan? Right, because it's it's reasonable. Back in the day, with our parents, it was like I'm gonna work in time sixty. I retire right. sixty five. If I'm lucky. You know, hang around another 20 years. But we look at people now, my parents are 70 plus and they're killing it. And so if you're not making a plan now for that, for that 100 year plan of what it's going to look like, then you're, you're like a boat just floating in the water, just like wherever, I'll go wherever. Kind of going wherever right? things take you. And that's not, that's not a way to live, live your life, right? And we, and we get caught up in that. Yeah. We get caught up drifting, you know. Like, a lot of us are drifting. Like people ask me, "Man, where is this going? Like, where's Curie going?" And I'm like, "I gotta figure that out," you know. Yeah. Or like, you know, where do you want to be? Where do you? Where does? Where is this really going? Right. And so I'd say for the first time in my life, it's like I feel like how do I say this? I feel like I'm purposefully wandering. If that makes sense, like I feel like. Because all my life I wanted to do two things. I wanted to, I wanted to be a pastor, be a teacher, and something. Sorry, girl. We going. We going. We gonna keep She's moving. Like, listen to me. Um. So I've had these like very set things I've wanted to do, and with disillusionment and maybe some reality checks about the things I wanted to do, like I'm feel like I put those things on the side for now, and like maybe I'll go back to them, but. And now it's like, I'm kind of, I don't necessarily know where everything is going for once. Like, I've always had that 100-year plan. You know, yeah. always, so it's a weird feeling because I've always been a very big visionary. I'm, I'm always good with long-term plans. Mm-hmm. Um, but lately, my short-term plan has been a little bit harder. So, I don't know. I think that's hard. How do you help people? Like, if, you, if I were to hire you as my life coach... How would you help me focus? Like, what, what things would you do? Well, I think, you know, you first have to figure out where you're at, right? You have to figure out what what is going on in your life right now from every aspect, health, mental, physical, right? And starting to figure out ways that you can sort of remove the stuff that's not working, hmm. right? Allocate your time around the things that matter. And then from there, 
you start to become more authentic, mm-hmm. right? And when you're your most authentic, then all the other decisions you make around your life, around your business, around the direction of curate <laughs> is moving in a direction that aligns with you, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's that that moral code, like, you know, I'm a league, I'm a DJ, I have my podcast, and I'm here to help people just think, right? Right? Like, I, I want to be, I think Socrates says, I can't teach people uh, one thing except how to think. How to think. Right? And so you're like, that's what I do. You listen to my music DJing. I'm, I'm infusing music as a way to right. get to the, the soul of you. You listen to my podcast. I'm here to touch those points that we know everybody's struggling with. I'm so, going to use this as a promo for my. Right? <laughs> but it's that. But, I'm always using it. Comes out of that mouth. But once you start to hone in on who you want to be, then everything else is you push it to the curb. Right? Like, am I going to this concert? Am I going here? Am I doing this on a Friday night or Thursday night? It's like, no. Hmm. I'm focused on. So this. it's kind of like you have a, a compass and you have a true, like a true north mm-hmm. and where. And anything you do needs to go towards that way. And it's like when you're going off, it's like, well, you're there. that's not where you're yeah. going. Mm-hmm. Right. So a lot of people are just working nine to five or not even just even even if you're self-employed, a lot of people are doing something where we don't necessarily know where it's going. But we're doing it for the short term uh, achievement of it, but not the right. long term, because those series of decisions mm-hmm. lead us to nowhere. It's like, where did that lead me to? And that's really good because someone like me who's. Not even to someone like me, like America in general is very like quick. Yeah. And you, as you're talking about going to different places and seeing the different values, yeah. I feel like it's one of the biggest differences is mm-hmm. like it's a very different value system. There's some long term elongated pleasure that happens in other countries and other mm-hmm. cultures, whereas us, we're very like quick. I want it now. I want to consume it now. And is that a part of like being, as you would say, like minimalist? Like, is it, is it a long term vision, you'd say? Yeah. yeah, I think I think you. Have I think everything be. in life is for us is about that long term goal and and just being, you know, less is more really. Well, and I think you, yeah, and I think you have to participate. Like you, you have to get down and dirty with your life. Like you have to participate in it. Like quit allowing uh, outside forces to dictate your happiness. Right. Wow. Like if you want something. Right, then you get laser focused and you get there. And and it doesn't make a difference if you're starting your own career. Like I have friends that are in companies and businesses that are just like, you know, I have this nine to five, I, I feel like I should be paid more or doing more. And, and I asked them like, how much time do you really dedicate at that job? Like, do you know everything about your position? Wow. Right? If there's a hundred degrees of what you can know about your company, where are you at? Sixty? Okay, so that's forty degrees. You can mm. grow in your company, and guess what? People will pay you for that. Yeah. Uh, right? You'll be able to apply for other jobs, or your company's going to recognize that, mm. and that moves you up. But it's this waiting and hoping right. and wishing. Right, 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 right. Maybe they'll recognize that. Like, <laughs> you got to go out there and take it. And I think, I don't mean that in an aggressive way, because Karen always, because I'm always like a... Let's go, let's yeah. Go yeah. It, right? you know? <laughs> but it's that idea of, of joy about it, right? And, and designing a life that works for you. What do you feel like, um, like, okay, so if if we have people, we have people listening here who are like, okay, I want to have some more control and some more freedom over things that I actually want to do. Things that, um, what was the biggest thing for you that made you realize that you, like, you're just saying, like, going out and getting it. What was the, what? What was the biggest thing for you that helped you, like, really hone in on the the jet set thing? Like, you're 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 doing like these vlogs and stuff, and like, what was the biggest thing that made you realize that you wanted to do that? Was there like a, a discontentment? Was there like a were you just like fed up with something, or like how how did you end up in that place? So, uh, you know, I always tell the story how. I was in debt before I met Corinne, well, literally right before I met Corinne. Uh, I was in debt to a point where I read this article that said, take your credit cards and put them in a cup of water and then put that water in the freezer and let them freeze. And then when you think about purchasing something, you take it out and you let it unthaw. <laughs> right? And I was like, that's how that's how bad I was in debt. Like, awesome. Right? And so I did that. 
And then something came up. I wanted. You know what I did? Right. I took some boiling water, took that cup out, and poured some. <laughs> oh, break that. <laughs> oh, hold on. I need. I need that last digit so I can. <laughs> uh, but it's like uh, when I got out of debt. I think that was the biggest turning point for me because we don't realize how much control individuals and creditors and, and, and all these people have over our life, right? With the phone calls, you owe me money. With the, you know, the mail, you mm-hmm. owe me money. Constantly, constantly looking at our paychecks and it's like, oh, that's already out the window. Mm-hmm. I'm paying off this stuff yeah. that I don't even use anymore. And so when I met Corinne, it was this freedom of... Nobody could tell me anything. You're right. right. Like that's ultimate freedom. And and when I got to that point, that's when I knew it was it was over. Like I think it was like two years ago, I was uh up at the Ritz in Orlando. Mm-hmm. And I pulled up my Toyota Scion, completely paid off. Mm-hmm. Pulled up my Toyota Scion, <laughs> I'm sitting there at the Ritz, I'm there for a week for work, and car comes up, we park the car, they go, car comes up. Yelled the guy like, "Hey, uh, can I get my car parked?" He's like, "Oh, my bad. I thought you were an Uber driver, you know." <laughs> and it was like this concept that he saw the vehicle yeah. in front of Ritz, like. And I think before that would have, I probably wouldn't. It doesn't mean anything right, right off the bat, but psychologically, like, oh, I, I can't afford you. <laughs> I'm out of my league and all that stuff. And then it just switched right then and there, where I was like, I own all this stuff, like. Yeah. My car can go in the ditch, bro. I can't. I'll go buy another one because I'm completely debt free. Like wow. I'm not, I don't owe anybody anything. So that gave me a power to sort of be like, I'm in control of my debt. You're in control. Back. No one is waiting for you to pay them. You ain't getting yeah. no one eight hundred calls from no one about right. no debt. So what's people listening? Um, what would you say is the dangerous part about having debt? What would you say is the most maybe like? most crippling thing about having debt for you like from your experience what would you say you can't take on opportunities that come your way i mean if if i had tons of debt i I wouldn't be able to if a wedding comes up i mean i did a pro bono wedding in bali and i wouldn't be able to do that yeah but that's where i got all of my next destination weddings from so i wouldn't have that would have never been an opportunity for me i would not have the option how'd you guys get out of it was it just like slowly or like how did you get out of? Uh, how did you get? Because you didn't yeah, have that. Never, She's like, I didn't I've have never that. Had that. Hey, look, I'm trying to. Ma- right. hey, look, <laughs> yeah. hey, look, I'm trying to marry a girl. I ain't got no debt. I got a good credit score. I'm gonna hop on that bandwagon. Right. I'm gonna be Co-sign. out. I'm coasting. I mean, the first time I mortgage. You know, when I was three, right. is just everything. That's everything. crazy. And I think for me, it was it was a slow process, but I knew where I wanted. And I and I literally just went through like two months worth of um, bank accounts, right? I logged online, like what did I spend last month? What did I spend the month before? And I wrote that out and was like, okay, well, what am I predicting to spend on my cell phone for a year and all this? And then all of a sudden I looked at it and it was like, man, like I make at that time I was making thirty five thousand and almost twenty seven, twenty something, twenty five thousand of it was going to cell phone, credit cards, apartment, car payment, insurance. And so then I just started whittling it down. It was like calling a credit card company. What can you do for me to get this done? Calling insurance companies. How can I lower this? You know, I've been with you for this long. Calling cell phones. They got the best rate. Comcast. I just Just started. Just just being diligent about bringing things down. Yeah. Because there's so many unnecessary things that we have. But... It's like a lot of us are afraid to look at our bank accounts, man. You like, I don't want to know what I'm spending a month on this meaningless thing. Because it, there's a discomfort. It, it's, it's an anxiety and a fear of... It, we, cause, I mean, for me, my parents, my parents didn't teach me crap about money. No. My, my electricity went out every month. Be, not even because my mom didn't make enough money, but because we didn't have a budget. No. And it just went to things, and she was like, oh, God, oh, I got to pay that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, a lot of the times that I follow suit of how I was raised of, like, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm, what I'm taking in, what, I'm, what right. I'm putting out. And a lot of people listening probably have the same thing. I know a lot of friends who are like, oh. I have bad credit because it's just irresponsibility. So do you have any advice for, like, 
people who don't, who weren't raised, I've, like, I, I love that you're dynamic because it seems like you have, like, this instilled financial responsibility and you have, like, an adapted financial responsibility where you've learned and you've, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not taking away from what you've no, learned. I mean, She's taught me so much. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of money. I had a single, you know, parent. Um, when my parents divorced when I was really young, my dad still lives in the house that he, that we were raised in and it's falling apart all around him. So it wasn't, he went about it, not the way I would, right, but right, it instilled right. some things that allowed me to continue the way that I want to and to have that freedom. So my dad's the extreme. I right. mean, he's literally like closes the door to a, a room that's not working <laughs> out anymore. You know, right. like that's, that's my dad. And he, but he retired he like what, like. 60, yeah. um, because uh, he just didn't want to work anymore. So he just placed stocks on line. Yeah. And That's good. So, but Corinne's my mom. Boss yeah. My, my girl's a boss. Yeah. 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 She, she's she humble. Went, she's being humble. Yeah, she wanted like, to buy a car. And, you know, we went there when she bought her Prius. And the guy's like talking, like, oh, here's this car. I get it down this for you. You pay this much a month. This much Prius. Like, oh, I'm for cash. Hey. Oh well, ma'am, you know I can do this to this. She's like, okay, that sounds great. All right, I like that. That's what's I'm paying cash. ridiculous too. It took two days to get this guy to sell me this car for cash. Two days, I had to come back the next day. Are you ready to sell it to me for cash yet? You ready yet? <laughs> He's just like the people system, not used to that. Well, the no. system is all about credit to put you on. Yeah. In debt. He's like, oh, well, I can get your payment so low, and I so I said, okay, well, give me a second. And I did the math. And I'm like, well, then I'm paying like three thousand dollars extra. I don't want to pay that. Yeah. I want to pay this cash right now. So man, I want to switch. I, I, I want to switch gears for just a second. So you said that you're Egyptian. Yeah. And that is, so yeah. you're, and then your mom is what? Um, from Spain and Spain. German. So my grandfather's German. You're just, you're just like a. Spanish. You're just like a. I'm a, a mutt. Mixed yeah. rice, you know. What I'm saying? Like. <laughs> and then uh, our daughter. <laughs> so and then and then you're. I who, am uh, sub-Saharan African American. Sub-Saharan African American. What does yeah. that mean? Uh, right? What does that mean? Like, know, like, um, that's what like Moroccan? Right? What does that mean? Like Madagascar? Like, <laughs> <I> mean, <yeah. laughs> and then we, we, did a D, well, we did a DNA test. You know. Because I wasn't sure at the time yeah. whether my grandmother was from Greece or Spain. So I wanted to find that out. So we did a DNA test, and he's like, I might as well do one too. Um, and then it came back, you know, European. So it was not at all helpful for me. Um, but then Jason comes in the door like, Honey, you won't believe this. Hey. I'll let you go. I'm, I'm 25% Eastern Asian. Hey. So Asian. You got that. You got that. You cooking that. Cooking that. Yeah. Uh, so Kung Pao chicken. Money, right? baby girl. Yeah. Is the, have you guys ever, because I would have, I would have assumed that you're more like, you're like uh, Caucasian. Like yeah. when I, obviously your name. And I always joke with him. I'm more African than he is. And <laughs> I know where my dad came directly from. Africa. He has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you ever gotten any sort of um, racial opposition as far as you guys being a mixed rate like mixed couple or no? Is it has been easy? I mean, my wife says that I see it just more because I think I see it like just you know just mm -hmm. in black in America, yeah. Yeah. right? You come across these situations where for her it's you know it, it may not mean anything, mm -hmm. you know, but for me I'm like oh can you believe that uh, you know but, right. For the most part, uh, I don't think we really had any bad situations. How do you say that? Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. I helped you out. <laughs> I, uh, but I tell you, what's really cool is whenever we travel outside the country, I don't get that. You don't get that at all. Yeah, like, I know. Like, there's never like, oh, there's black guys. It's yeah. just like nobody even pays I mean, you still feel that. it here. Yeah. Do you do you have a lot of experience with any sort of like racial profiling, racism? Oh, well, I I went I was born in Indianapolis in a predominantly black community and then around 3rd grade my dad moved me to a small town in Muncie, Indiana where I was literally like 25% of the black population in that school. Wow. So there was like four of us. Wow. Uh, so, you know, it, it taught me to adapt. And so I think I sort of use that process, you know, in everything that I've done. Right. She is just she's going. She's, she's talking, lit. man. Lit. She's just... Lit. What is what is your information intake like? Because I know you guys are like minimalist in sense of like finances and lifestyle. But like are you guys like pop are you guys up with pop culture? Do you guys like pay attention to all that good stuff? Like Absolutely. So because yeah. there's like a overload of information. So I feel like a lot of times like 
it, it's even so it might be even harder. It might be easier to take care of your finances than it is to take care of your information intake because there's so much stuff. Yeah. There's so many like right wing, left wing, new Bible, you know, so many yeah. different things. Um, what do you? What is your guys' take on like the chaos going on in like what well, in like social media? politics do you guys consume like that or like do, how, how do you do you stay away from that like no we can't we can't stay away from it um but we don't i don't think we openly consume it like we're not sitting right. in front of the tv no. just just taking in just taking everything are you guys tv people do you guys watch tv like seven o'clock news like, <laughs> like that. no no we're more uh Apple TV, Apple TV, right? Street. Like I'm sitting down with a purpose, right? Yeah, we do a lot of docs, and we do a lot, a lot of documentaries. What's your really favorite, What's your favorite documentary you've watched so far? We're really into Abstract. That's been oh our newest, gosh, sick. our newest love. What is it? Abstract. It's a show Netflix. called Abstract, and it just uh, highlights a different designer every episode. Um, so it's an architect, or oh, it's wow. like a set designer, like or like uh, uh, Michael Jordan shoes. They did a whole. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's just really inspiring. Yeah. That's crazy. We like to watch stuff that gets us to pause it and start working. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh <laughs> damn! Kind of Let's go. Like. Yeah. yeah. Inspiring. Have you guys watched The Minimalist? Um, yeah. yeah. What do you What do you guys think about that? I heard it mixed reviews. I heard it was. I heard it was like. More of like a promo for like their, I don't know. The book, the body. The book, yeah. I don't want to say I'm not a huge fan of it, but it just, I think it was too extreme. No. So it'll push people away rather than bring them on board. Like wear one shirt for a whole year. he's out of like a bag. He doesn't have a home. And that's not what, what that's not what yeah. I think is. So how do you, how do you, how do you, then how do you guys define minimalist? Like is minimalist mm-hmm. like the, le- the, like people think, I and this is what I, I think minimalist is like having less. That's I think it. it's having no more than what you need. Okay. I think you have to, I think it's just eliminating the clutter. Yeah. Anything that's just not providing value. Your like, space. That can be mental, that can be physical, mm-hmm. whatever it is, just eliminating the things that don't make you feel good, mm. and aren't providing value to your life. Mm. Right? And, and, and I think a lot of times, like that movie, there's, there's varying degrees, right? Like those guys are showing where they're at and they're at 100% now. Right. Right. So if you're sitting at your house and you have a garage full of stuff, closets that are packed in the room, and you see this movie, you're like, oh, I'm not with that. I'm not with that. Yeah, it's not attainable for you. <laughs> what? And so that right. adds more to your stress because it's like, that's right. so far away for me to get to. I'm just not going to do it. Mm. Right now, we're working with his parents and it's just. Get rid of that extra toaster. Get rid of that. Oh my gosh! You know, and they're box seventy plus clothes. years. Yeah, mm. and they're starting to recognize. I think my dad was trying to cook something special for us, and he had a specific cooker for it, but it was packed up in the closet right. and other stuff. And he was like, uh, "I'm, I'm just doing on this that. one." Well, yeah. then why do you have it? The yeah. why do you? Uh, <laughs> it's like when I moved. I moved from uh, Cape Coral to three bedroom, have a garage. So the garage is the most dangerous thing yeah. because you just. <laughs> Yeah. Throw it in there. Yeah. So when I moved out, I had to move from three bedroom to downtown Fort Myers, one bedroom apartment, right. going up three stories of stairs. So it was like, I don't need that. I don't want that in my house. Like, so it actually made me simplify. It made yeah. me simplify mm-hmm. what, like, it made me think, when am I going to use that? What value does it bring to my life? Mm-hmm. And it was like, I was like, it made me like it, it accidentally a minimalist for like that right, time. Right. And now the hard part is like not adding things I don't need. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't need right. that. Like, someone's like, hey, I want to give you this uh, dresser. I'm like, I don't need a dresser. Yeah. And most people... We always have people that are like trying to give us a constant. <laughs> and unfortunately, for a lot of people, it happens at the, at the worst times they become minimalists, right? So um, going through bankruptcy. Right? Mm. You've gotten so far that now it's like you have no other choice. Or the loss of a home or the loss of a family member. All of a sudden, it's like I just it's just so overwhelming. And so the idea is to try to approach that before. Because that's, that's added stress you don't need. Yeah, when you're forced into that, it's... Yeah. Well, I tell people it's like it takes me 45 minutes to get dressed in the morning. Why? Wow. Yeah. Right? Like, figure out a way to eliminate that because that weighs on you. You wake up in the morning, you get out of the shower, and you're like, oh, am I going to wear this shirt? Am I going to wear these pants? And you yeah. get the same shit every time. <laughs> and you think, yeah. about, you think about uniforms in school, in elementary school. Like, that, and it's, I hated uniforms. Oh, my God. But uniforms was like, that was that was the savior because it's like I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wear the same thing. And it, it took out the anxiety 
and the social dynamic of is this going to look cool? Is it? And so it's not saying that everyone needs to wear a uniform, but it's saying tapping into that experience of like, why is why is that a good thing? You know, it made me go. School's really not for this; it's for this, and so. Tapping into that value yeah. is really cool. And Corinne did a great job with it just on her clothing because it's like, wear what you love, mm. right? Wear that makes you feel good in the morning. And once you do that, and everything in your closet makes you feel that way, then it's yeah, easy I mean, to it's go. Often, mm. I think you wear things because you have them. And it's the guilt of, oh, I bought this. I, I got to wear it. But then it's not necessarily your favorite thing. So you're not wearing your favorite stuff and feeling your best because the guilt you have for this yeah, I bought it. it. I have it. Yeah. Or do you feel like people wear things for other people? Oh, that too. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. it's not necessarily make them feel comfortable. How do you find the balance, though, between comfort and image? You know, do you still worry about, because I feel like you guys are well-dressed, like, do you still worry about image? Or is that, like, a small part of your guys' dynamic? Or do you just not, like, oh, whatever? I think you, I think you can't avoid it. Yeah, we I definitely think. care about image. Right. Um... But well, we try to simplify that. Image. Right. But being smart about it. I mean, think about, you know, a lot of times when you see some of these magazines of, like, the the famous people in their day-to-day, what are they usually wearing? Like, blue jeans, a black t-shirt, a <laughs> white yeah. t-shirt. Like, everything is just very just simple. And I think getting to that, and, and it fits. It's so, all about fit, really. Yeah. You come to find that you really invest in the hmm. well-fitted pieces and then you're always looking great. <laughs> that's, that's, so speaking of fashion and and influence, we were talking earlier about Kanye West. <laughs> um is that someone that inspires you? Like well, who are some of your inspirations like just in life? Like for you guys? I think for me inspirations, um Earl Nightingale, if you've never heard of him. Sounds familiar. Uh, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. Dude, I've had like, multiple people tell me to read that book. Man, I mean, his, he's so poetic in the way he, he gets you to think about just life in general, your attitude and how you approach each day. What's, um, what's his big thing? What's his concept in, in um, a nutshell? Well, one of the big things he talks about is uh, your attitude. Like, nothing is possible to do unless you have a great attitude. And so you choose that every morning. You choose to wake up with a crappy attitude, then I mean, what do you expect is going to happen? And so, for at least for me, I realize that every morning I have an opportunity to choose. Mm-hmm. And when I do that, I mean, it's crazy things happen. Right? So you're not you're not necessarily a product of what happens to you. You can you you're in control. That's something great, and beautiful about that control thing of like, yeah. I don't have to be a product of what happens to me. And everybody can do that. I don't care. I right. don't care who you are. Like every person that woke up this morning and had the chance to choose when they jump in that shower, when they put in their clothes, like what type of day am I gonna have? It just seems so lofty and like it doesn't seem realistic sometimes when people <laughs> say stuff like that. Because you're like, nah, but damn, like this shit sucks. And it, it, it's like it what it does is that it makes you take responsibility. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's hate, we it. hate responsibility. <laughs> I hate responsibility. I hate going, oh, I'm messed up. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and but it's also when you, in, when you embrace that, it's empowering. Because yeah. you're like, you like, know who you are. You have to, yeah. You turn tragedy you to triumph. You turn things around and every day is new and fresh and take it on. And I'm going to tell you this, like, how old are you right now? Uh, 25, 26. Oh, damn. All right, so, Mr. so I think, I think we're coming from like, we are the future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but at 30, I had this sort of, they call it, you know, that quarter life crisis mm-hmm. where like I quit playing around 25, 26. I was out doing my thing. 28, 29. Like I'm still like, oh, single. I'm still the cool guy. Mm-hmm. And then 30 hits and you're like, man, all this stuff that I expected to happen before I turned 30 didn't. You told yourself when you were right? 18, like, I'm going to have this car, I'm going to have this house, I'm going to have this woman, all this stuff. And now you're at 30, like, shit, dude, what do I do next? 30 so You know, like, now I have to either revert back to the things that I was trying to avoid mm. or push forward in a different direction. And that's tough at that time in your life because you don't, like, now you're like, well, okay, well, what did I do? What did you want? And so I think you're in that, right, that, in that 25, 30, you're still just trying to figure out who you are. That's so hard because you, it's like I want to have this all this like 
a long form sense of who I am that goes to one place. Like I want to be this and then this is everything I'm going to do to be that, right? But that's not how it goes because my desires change. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. My perspective changes. This conversation is changing my perspective. The fact that you're telling me about your 30s and what that did, it just changed my perspective. So my perspective is always changing. Therefore, so my, my question is, when do you get to a point where you just commit to a path? Because I think you, it's different for everybody. Right. Um, and, I mean, I'm always changing <laughs> right. i'm constantly changing and i want to be you know i want to constantly you know look for new avenues i mean right now i mean i wanted to get to luxury weddings so i got it i'm doing luxury weddings that's awesome and I'm, I'm excited i'm fulfilled but now what's moving. next it was next. so now it's adventure elopement that's my next you know love i want wow. to start really doing at least five adventure elopements four days in a different country with a couple that doesn't want a wedding and they just want to experience it photo, video, and, and that's my next push. So we'll see if we can get that to catch on. And then once it catches on, you know, I'm probably going to want something You're going to want something you know? different. Um, not leaving, you know, my luxury weddings and the stuff that I love, right. but just adding to that. And I think, you know, mm-hmm. to, to add to what Corinne said, it's, it is that fear, but you have to do, like, I think it's three things you can really do right now. It's like, pick something and commit, right? Like, it doesn't have to be forever. It just has to be for like right now. And so if it's like, I'm going to, you know, sell coffee, like, all right, today I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm going to sell coffee. I'm going to get on YouTube. I'm going to learn about coffee. I'm going to do this. I'm going to commit. I'm going to put it out there. Right. And three years from now, guess what? I'm on to something else. But that. How do you know when to switch? How do you know when to switch? How do I know when. Malik needs to stop doing the podcast because it's not working. Well, Malik, when you, I well, think, when, oh, go ahead. I would say when it's not working, when yeah. it is working. When it is working, when it is it's working. fulfilled. You've, you've gotten what you wanted out of it. Out of it. And it's no longer fulfilling you. So I have to know you what I challenge. want out of it. Yeah. I have to know what is the yeah. thing that I went after with the podcast. Yeah, what so is that, your goal? Yeah. What's the end goal? Hmm. And then attain it. Yep. And then if it continues to fulfill you, great. Then keep on it. If it If you need a new challenge, then... And go for Evolve. It. Steve yeah. Jobs. And you don't have to drop it. You know, just right. let it work for you. So whatever you're doing next, that's what your podcast can be about. Right. Or, you know, because you've got the skill of creating a podcast now, mm-hmm. so use that for your next goal. For whatever thing you're doing. That's good. I mean, that's, that's what we do in life. I mean, yeah. our minimalism helps our weddings, helps mm-hmm. his business, helps us travel. It feeds your life. Our everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really good. Um, and Steve Jobs once said that, you know, if you wake up in the morning three days in a row and you're not happy with what you're doing, then it's time to change. So, like, wow. if you wake up and it's like, man, I got nothing to do with this podcast. Okay, that's that's understandable. But then, like, three days in a row, you're I saying, that like, over and over. It's, it's time for you to start saying what, <sighs> what is yeah. pushing me in a different direction. Or what is going to get me excited about this podcast? Yeah. Again? What's going to, you know. What do I got to do to recharge myself yeah. to get back into mm-hmm. this? So for me, with the podcast, I'm going to do 20 episodes. I'm going to do a season finale on May 31st. Check it out. I'm a little plug. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to give it two months and come back with a fresh thing, right? Like Because there are, there have been episodes where I have been, like, freaking tired, stressed out, ang- anxious. But that's not how I come in every time, right? right, like, right. If I come in the last, the next five episodes, it's like, oh, it's just sucks. You know, like, well, I hate it. it may also be, I mean... Take a little more time to mm-hmm. vet the person or right. vet those people. Get, you know, do after more us. research. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> right after yeah, just keep up. Not right now. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, maybe it's just putting more time into creating the atmosphere that you're going to be super pumped about yeah. every time. And, a, and, a, and a, another thing you could do to side, aside from that is okay. that declutter, right? right? Because you don't realize how much stuff is weighing you down, Right. How can you be more efficient at running your podcast? Is there things you can eliminate? Right. Things Simplifying that can make you do your job yeah. easier. So then now you're coming in. And I'm doing what I love only. That's right. It. And it's quick. Let's right. Let's get in. Let's do it. I try to throw my accounting onto him on a day-to-day. Really? Day. I'm trying to find. <laughs> I, I know what I want. Look, I, I'm trying to find an assist. I'm actually looking for a personal assistant right now. I think I have uh, the person I want. Um She's awesome, um, great person. Um, but, but that's kind of what I've been thinking about. Is like, yeah. 
you know, how can she take care of things that I don't want to take care of? Yeah. And but, do you know what you don't want to take care of, though? Yes, I do. I do. I've, I've <laughs> learned. I've learned over the years what I know. I don't want to take care of money. I don't want to take care of <laughs> necessarily like day to day like emails. And I, I want. Yeah. I want to be able to say I. What I love doing with my clients is sitting down right here in this wedding collective space and just talking about their wedding. I like talking about their engagement. Yeah. I love yeah. talking about how they awesome. met. I love talking, you know, I love I love the day of wedding. Like, welcome, Mr. Mm-hmm. and Mrs. Like, that's my yeah. jam. Like, that's what I do. That's what I, I'm in my, my flow, I'm in my zone. And that's what I want to keep doing. But the other stuff, the invoicing, accounting. the accounting, the, film, the email, <laughs> the planning. The, yeah. You know, I have to get that. I, I've learned to do that. I've, I've become very efficient in doing that. Yeah. But if I didn't have to. Yeah. And come up with a process for that, because that makes it easier for you to get what you want process and for her, street. For her to understand plug. what you want. Okay. Right? Because then it becomes more frustrating if you're like, this is what I want you to do, and then like something comes in and she's like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You don't clarify. Back to you, right? So if you come up, Corinne did a great job with that, like the process of like when new clients come in, when invoicing comes in, those are the three things I need done with you. Templates, templates, templates. Okay, then. All right. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be devil's advocate. I'm gonna be devil's advocate with y'all. Oh, on templates? I'm not, no, no, on templates. No. But on this concept of of doing the thing you really want to do, because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people who are listening are in a nine to five job, mm-hmm. and not not knocking nine to five because nine to five it, it just depends on your form of happiness and whatever. But okay, someone's listening. They have two kids, a husband. Right, they have a life. They have baseball, basketball, football. Mm-hmm. You know, club this, th- whatever. They f- probably feel very cluttered at this point. How and and maybe it's a mom who has a dream to do probably what even you're doing. Mm-hmm. Cause God, what you're doing is a dream come true, right? So how I mean, what what is advice would you give to them? Like how would they, how do they even start to begin to do that with all the stuff going on in their life? It begins with decluttering. Yeah, I think. Well, clearing out time. Yeah. To focus. Yeah. I think it's, it's like I it. said before. You gotta you gotta assess where you're at. A lot mm-hmm. of us don't assess where we're at in our life. So, if there's 24 hours in a day, like, go on a calendar, and say, okay, f- Monday through Friday, where do I have to be? Where I have to be. Right. I have to be at work from this time. I have to go the kids to school. I have to pick them up at this time. Start blocking those off and. What you'll start to find out, unfortunately, you're gonna have to give up on the binge watching and Netflix at mm-hmm. eight o'clock at night, right? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Or I don't know what I want for dinner, so I'm just grabbing stuff. Like you have to be more intentional, intentional yeah. about where your time's going, and that's where I think a lot of people. Because when you break it down, I don't. You can find it online somewhere. When you break down the amount of hours in a day, like we could take the school, mm-hmm. the work, the bedtime, the dinner. Uh, watching TV for four or five hours and you still have someone close to like five hours of the day and sleeping eight hours and you still have five hours out of your day that are just being wasted. And a lot of people don't do that system where they look at it and say, oh, mm. what have I been doing for these five hours? You can't even recollect like, oh, I thought I didn't have any time and all of a sudden you find five hours here. And, there. and if you feel like you need rest, then schedule it. Yeah. Schedule the rest time. Because a lot of people are resting in between and they don't realize they're getting any rest because it's not intentionally done so they don't you know you don't jump from place to yeah. place i think people like me get, get afraid of scheduling because i'm very whimsical i'm very spontaneous I'm the same way but what i've learned is i can schedule time to be whimsical yeah. right? exactly. which just seems like an oxymoron it seems like this a dichotomy of like yeah but it, you know but no smart. i need to schedule time yeah. to you know do these things yeah I'm going to play Facebook time. for an hour. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever it is. Like, schedule that instead of every day, every five minutes. No, letting it take you. Yeah. Letting it take you. Letting it take you. That's what it is. Like my podcasting journaling time in the morning is everything. Go on a long bike ride, listen to a podcast, and usually I come home like, honey, we got to go for a walk. We got stuff to talk about. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm That's up at so 5.30 awesome. every morning. And mm-hmm. It's from 5.30 to like 7.30. Dude, like, I'm jamming away because nobody's up. Nobody can bother me. Including me, not up. So, are you? I have a question. We, we're kind of coming to time here. Are you guys helping people? You, are you helping people do this? These these things that you're doing? Yeah, he's so, doing it. Jet yeah. Set State, and then I'm starting to with Jet Set Moth, just mm-hmm. like get the mother base. And so, what I'm doing is I'm putting together a program uh, that people will be able to take uh, 
in a community. Can I sign up now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my idea is that because, and you know, it's really interesting, Kieran and I talk about this a lot, is that because I've eliminated, we've eliminated so much in our life, like, I really want to help people make this change. So for um, me, like, she does boutique weddings, like, I want to do these small niche communities of, like, 10 to 12 people right. where we're walking through this as a group. So it's yeah. not just Malik on the phone with a, and you another, have each other to yeah. support each other and hold that's accountable. Awesome. That's those are the, those are like the oh you got the workout groups those those yeah, CrossFit, right. CrossFit yeah. it's just like, and then it's more than CrossFit you it's, know it's a community it's, and it's a group of friends that you really build and life you can do life yeah. it's not just working out together yeah. and they could be from wherever and with this group it's really great the way he's got it set up you really just get to know each other on a deeper level than any of their friends know yeah. them and. Because it's about business and it's about, you know, life and your family and it goes into, you know, finances and you just get really real with people. And then you have those people mm. to continue, you know, to support you. And when are you starting that, man? Like, is that? So, uh, August 1st will be my first uh, class. Yo, I'm excited. So, I'm going to start pushing a lot of stuff uh, when we get back from, well, early June. I'll start pushing information out, mm -hmm. getting people signed up. It's going to be you know, we laugh about this, but I, I want to do an interview process so everybody comes in because, like, it's taking it's taking time out of my life. Yeah. And so I want to get the right people in there. I don't want somebody. Going, yeah, that's ah. big. That's really big. I think for success when you're when you're an entrepreneur is really selecting your people and your clientele. I mean, because it can really get, burn you out if you got the wrong people. You know, mm. it makes you you know not happy with yeah. your direction and. Yeah. That's great. And so yeah, so that's and then Corinne. I love the idea of uh, Jet Set Ma because I get this that. out. Do that. Uh, I love the idea of just you know being in the education system and Corinne just being creative with traveling. Every time we would travel, we'd go, oh my god, it would be great to just like take our daughter here. Wow. At the time, our child, you know, we had a daughter, but it was like take our child here and be like, this is you know where Christopher yeah. Columbus was. This is yeah, you know, so all these gonna, things. Yeah, turn into education. She, so we're going to homeschool. And... She ain't opened up a textbook. She's living yeah, a textbook. Yeah. She's going to the places and mm -hmm. experiencing these things. So our, our, like our 100-year goal. So eventually, Jason, since he writes curriculum, eventually we want to be able to write curriculum that is travel-based so that homeschool is not really home anymore. It's it's traveling it's school, travel. and what? he writes the curriculum, and I write the itineraries and for the different in. places that you're going. Yeah, for, oh. for kids and families. What? So if, so if you're going a trip to Spain, you could say, you know, here's a curriculum for Spain. There's history yeah. lessons that we learn in the U.S. around these topics. Now you're in Spain with your child. Let's go to those places. Oh and let them interact with it because when they come back you know that kid you couldn't stand in class like oh I went yeah I've been there holidays. I've seen that right? <laughs> that's crazy yeah because we learned, I, I taught uh, sixth grade world history for a year and nice. we went to we, we talked about ancient Greece we talked about China we talked about you know the fertile crescent and Mediterranean we talked about yeah. all these things yeah but if your daughter is going to those places, yeah. you know, she goes to Egypt and we and learn about how you're interested. Yeah. I mean, if you're reading about it in a textbook, you can't really get into it. What's a it? textbook? It, what, yeah. What's yeah. information without experience? Yeah. Right. I think that's the, they say, what is it? Time and mobility is the new rich. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I, that's what we want to create is the, the freedom to be able to choose. So with that, you know, it starts Ooh. with when she's an infant and traveling with her and, and we can't bring a bunch of stuff, then we won't go any places. So... Our first trip to Italy, we're hmm. going to have one backpack for the three of us. Um, Jason will have a backpack, and I'll be carrying her, and then I'll have her a little backpack for her diaper bag, and that's it. No carriers or beds or wow. strollers or – I mean, clutter. that's literally all we're bringing for two weeks in Italy. And, and I've been pushing on my baby girl, so everybody pay attention. Uh -huh. going to do a packing list. Oh, yeah. no way. That's so awesome. So people can see it because I think a lot of times people are just like, whatever, dude. You, it's easy for you. Right, and so the right. idea is to show what we're taking, so then and how it's used throughout the trip, and kind of documenting, yeah, or or where we slipped up and we should have brought something extra. I mean, good to know. Show, yeah, you're yeah. showing the process and learning learning yeah, process. Yeah. I love what you said. You said time and mobility is a new rich. Yeah. Time and mobility is new. Yeah. That's that's. I heard that after seventy thousand dollars of income a year, yeah, your no level of happiness mm -hmm. doesn't change. Yeah. I'm willing to say if you if you get it right, dude, after thirty, forty thousand dollars, it doesn't level of happiness. Like when you're doing what you love, dude, 
and you're taking care of all the things that you can take care of. I mean, after twelve thousand dollars, right? We're a perfect example. I mean, yeah, we're super happy on twelve. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's so freeing for the people listening because they're like, well, well, I need to make as much money as this person to be this happy. It's like, no, what is that? What does that twelve, twenty, thirty dollar do for yeah. you? And once you get it, then stop. You don't need to keep chasing. Yeah. Now we can be a little more particular about our loves and our passions. And, you know, because we're not chasing money. We're chasing, you know, our souls. That's awesome. That we could do. And we're not, you know, we only need so much to survive. So we don't need to invest in all these things unless it provides value. Oh, dude, I mean, I found so... my, my favorite experiences in my business were, you know, pro bono. Pay my travel. I'd love to be there for you. I'd love to do that. Because yeah. I can. Because I don't really need. I don't say I don't need the money. No, I need yeah. money, people. <laughs> <laughs> I need but money. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I guess I don't so much. No. That, that's real. That's freeing, man. Because a lot of people would. T- this is like a lot of like books and classes and courses that tell you like how to make you know people who are in like multi level marketing schemes who are just like how to make more money so you no. can do that. It's not. That's not necessarily the answer. The, an- the the answer is more so tapping into what you really want how to do that, how to utilize that, how to create value, and yeah. then creating that contentment so that you can do more. Like, right. Dude, yeah. I would love, and, and that's why we get, like, I really appreciate Narrative Coffee and Millennial Brewery and Wicked Dolphin because they, they have seen the value right. and they're allowing me to do this, you know? Yeah. And um, they're creating the opportunity for me to sponsor the podcast so that I don't have to take that money and allocate it, you know, like... And it's a win-win for them. It's a win-win. Look what you've given to them. It's, it's, you know, it's a two-way street. And when you connect mm-hmm. people that are on that journey together, I mean, all things are possible. Yeah. yeah. Dang, man. I love, I love this part. I love finding it and watching it before we thank come on. You. Every thank episode, you. Thank you. Which yeah, is so dude. great. And I, the people are you. our people. You <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. It's nice when you find your people. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really cool. I, you know... For me, it's like I listen to, like you said, like I listen to podcasts every day. Yeah. Like that's what I'm doing because as self-employed people, you have that opportunity yeah. to listen while you work. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it's like what what I want to listen to locally. What do I want to hear? I want to I want to know people like you. I want to hear the perspective and the gems of information because information is everything. I feel like information is worth is is worth so much more than money. I can take what you give me. What you guys is get the people listening. You could take this information and do so much more with it than you could do if I give you $100. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I, I could take the information you've given me through your experience. Because you've paid for your experience. You've paid sweat, blood, right. tears, you know, like for everything that you went through. And now you're putting right. it on this podcast. So I, I, one day I would hope to charge for this podcast because it's information. Yeah. Right? You know, like if I ask somebody, hey, man, like, Who's this? Who's a person that I can know in this industry that'll help me? I, they should be able to charge me for that because it's so important. So, I uh, thank you for that. I feel like this podcast is something that I want to listen to myself. You know, like I feel like you guys have so much to give, and we could probably talk for another two hours. I feel like we're just kind of getting into yeah. it. It sucks. <laughs> it does. Um, it's starting to feel hot now. <laughs> um. I, I, um. So no, I I really appreciate you guys coming on. Is there anything before we head out of here that you want to? Tell the, the, the listeners um, about what you're doing or uh, maybe how they can connect with you guys or anything like that. Yeah. Um, uh, the website is jetsetwed.co. Um, follow us on Instagram, constantly posting our Insta stories. I mean, we do. What's your Instagram uh, handle? Jetsetwed. Jetsetwed. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can find us Jetsetwed Facebook, Instagram, and .co for the website. Um, but yeah, we're always sharing behind the scenes and dinner parties and you know how to's you yeah. know how to have like you know a little bit of it did, on any did, budget kind of thing did you just go like on some private jet somewhere to like he just did. Masters, yeah, yeah. Like, you just, yeah. Just playing golf with the that's, that's a perfect okay. example of time and mobility yeah there's an opportunity that popped up hey can the you day before hey you were able to fly a private yeah. jet to the masters uh yeah i am <laughs> <laughs> you know but yeah. uh I and think then jet set mob Oh. Yeah, good. And then Jet Set Ma's, uh same, or, or Jet period, set period, M-A for M-A. Instagram. And then JetSetMod.com for our website, which is super fresh. Um, I'm just starting yeah. to blog on it, but yeah. And so moms, is it just like, is it mostly based off of what, like moms or type thing? Like, uh, but no, um, or is it kind of Really, it's just, it's just how to 
simplify raising a kid. Really? really what sparked it is when we were pregnant, it was, oh, good thing you got all your travel done. Good thing you did all this. Good nah. thing you did all that. And we were just like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Show you. I mean, and literally there's, she's, we never have a sitter. We never have to. We just bring her everywhere. She's used to every noise. She can sleep through anything, as you can see. Yeah. Um, and she just, we kind of just wanted to show people how to bunk that. Yeah. How about you, man? Uh, you can uh, jetsetstate.com is my website. It's fresh as well. Um, and then, of course, Jet Set, uh State on Instagram. On Instagram. And it just popped off April 4th, March 4th. Cool. Um, it's interesting. I got let go at my company I was working for. Yeah. Which was like the best thing. Dude, real quick, real quick before yeah, we go. Tell me about that. that. Tell, some, tell the people about that because I watched your vlog on that, your Facebook Live about that. What happened? And then we'll end on that. So, yeah. Dude, it's, I mean, it's, it's everything that's going on. You know, the world is changing. Work is changing. Everything's changing in our society and you have to be able to adapt. And for a lot of bigger companies and the company I was working for, they were just adapting on how they were going to do business. And that's that's normal, right? That's expected in any company or business to change their direction. And with that, unfortunately, my position got uh, axed in the, a large group of us, which, you know, how you respond, like Mike Tyson mm-hmm. says, like, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Until they get punched in the face. And yeah. I took what I learned from the Thailand situation, and that's how this whole Jet Set State started. And then when that happened, it was like serendipity. Like, wow. I, I lost my job, but I have... More than two and a half years with the savings Huge. saved up. Wow. I'm starting this company. I'm I'm leaving with a fresh take on life. That if I want to get another job or if I want to do the jet set stay full time, I have choices. And so at that moment, Corinne was just sort of like, "Honey, you gotta you gotta do it." And so I was like, "All right, well let's let's get it going. Let's go." And so that was a unique experience, and and hopefully get people in that sort of same situation. You created that freedom, that time, that mobility. Mm-hmm. And that's that's so cool, man. And I, I watched that and because, you know, I, I resonate with that, I empathize with that because I'm not, I didn't get fired, but I quit. I mean, I quit both my jobs. I was a teacher in the past. I quit both of those to go fully into kind of like just whatever I wanted. Not even for that, just for the sake of that didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. And I had to adjust. And then... Um, I, I didn't have the financial um, freedom, but I created it in the process of that that avoid. And so um, either way, man, when you get there, when you get to the places that we're kind of talking about, it is very empowering and very free. And so I hope the people, I know the people who are listening feel very encouraged by you two and your beautiful daughter. Thank you so much for having um, us. I really, I mean, thank you for the uh, gems of information you've given Thanks for your honesty, authenticity, for letting us into kind of your world. And uh, I know people are going to follow you. Go follow them on their social media um, and all the things they're doing. And thank you. I hope to work with you at some point on a wedding, yeah, you know, and I'm cool. I hope to go to, you know, Thailand and, right. you know, DJ in right, the... Anytime. <laughs> the you know, pop-up podcast. Pop-up pop, Like, look, whatever happens. Um, Shouts out to Josh Comer for um, doing this video. Appreciate you, buddy. And uh, mm-hmm. thank you guys for listening to the Curate Podcast again. This is probably the longest podcast we've done. Hands oh, down. No. 120. We, we have no. a habit of it was, doing people. <laughs> this is so good. It's so good. <laughs> thank you, guys. Y'all have a good week. Take care. Give some feedback, comment, share, like on Facebook, YouTube, all that good stuff. Peace out. Bye.